Hello and welcome to today's surprisingly long studio vlog, I guess you could call it. But I'm on spring break currently. I decided to take this time to go back into doing different mediums that I enjoy. I also happened to get a lot of packages, like I had ordered some art market supplies from Michaels and I received some cool paintbrushes from Artify and then I also got some markers and just a bunch of stuff came in this week. And I'm still waiting on my plushies to come in and some sticker sheets that I got. Actually, they might be coming in soon, so I'll include them at the end of the video if they come in on time. It's been a pretty busy week and I hope you enjoy seeing all the art supply hauls and all the things that I created. And I have to be honest, it was a lot. I'm really proud of myself. There's a lot of variation. I finished a lot of stuff and I'm feeling good about it. But anyway, enough about that. Let me show you the first painting that I did this week and I'll talk to you again soon. I think this painting turned out super cute and it's so small. It doesn't have to be that small. I haven't done a big painting in a long time, but I think these days it takes me a lot of energy to sit down and paint. So working with something small is really nice. And I also like these wooden panels that I've been painting on. And I came up with this really cute, silly little guy. And I think he looks amazing. Maybe I'll make him into a print. I don't know, but it actually took me quite a long time, as you can see by how long this process video is. I cut it down into two minutes, but it had to have taken me at least two hours to paint this tiny little thing. I used my new Artify brushes. I experimented with both the acrylic and watercolor brushes, even though I was using acrylic paint, just to see how the paint brushes held the paint. And I thought they both worked really well. I haven't used the oil painting brushes yet because I haven't done an oil painting in a while, but I'll let you know how that goes when I use them.
Hello, I'm back. I hope you enjoyed that amazing, fantastic, ASMR-esque decorating session that we had. I really had a good time. I love decorating sketchbooks and ASMR. Sorry to say it. Is that controversial? Anyway, after I decorated my sketchbook, I went in to try some of the pens that they sent me as well. And they were all different nib thicknesses. And I really enjoy like a medium thick nib. I don't really know how to explain that. Like I don't like it when they're too thin. I feel like I had a micro liner phase when I was younger, but I'm not in that phase anymore. The medium thick size nib makes me feel like I'm a little kid and I'm drawing something fun. But anyway, I tried those out first just to warm up a little bit. I just drew a bunch of silly little guys. Actually, later in the video, I talk a little bit about how I've been wanting to get back into serious illustration. But as you can see, I was not feeling that way on this day. Like I just wanted to draw some silly little guys and they're really funny and actually i was gonna i was gonna say a spoiler i'll wait for you to get to that moment and then i tried out the markers and they're really nice they're really saturated and nice to work with they're a lot better than the other ones i have where they bleed a lot and i don't know if it's the sketchbook that they sent me but these just don't really have that much bleed to them like they don't go outside of the lines that i drew if that makes sense so that was a really great surprise anyway i want you to see the official thing that i came up with in a little bit and it's really exciting i'll tell you the exciting news when you get to it Okay, I feel like I talked about it so much that maybe it's not even that exciting, but the little guys- <laughs> Sorry, it just sounds so stupid. The little guys that I drew and then I colored in with marker, I ended up liking them so much that I scanned them and I made them into sticker sheets. <laughs> it's not as exciting as I was making it sound, like I kept almost telling you, and then I was like, no, it's a surprise. And I don't even know if it's that exciting, but I just thought they turned out so cute and they made them into a little sticker sheet look. Yeah, they're still on their way, but I'll insert a clip of them when they get here, which should be soon. I'm gonna have them up for my next shop update and for the in-person market that I'm having in late April. So I got these like storage boxes, two of these. These are like photo holders, I guess, but I'm gonna use them for stickers because my stickers are actually quite big. Wait, let me open it so we can look at it. So I could use this for prints and there's one, two, three, four, there's six of these smaller boxes in this box. Stickers like these that I've been keeping in like these little card Older things but this isn't very efficient because it actually doesn't like oh because it doesn't that's why it's not efficient actually so this is obviously better storage but my issue is that this only takes up half i wonder if there's a way for me to create a divider how should i do that i also have a lot of smaller boxes like these this has little rings in it but as you can see my stickers are way too big for these boxes and these are now too big for my stickers but here's the real reason that i got this box because nothing fits these five inch stickers that I have besides, I guess, this box. So this is excellent. On my display, I'm going to number these so it's a lot easier for customers to be like, I want number one. And then on the box, I'll put a number one. And actually, actually, for this exact reason, I got these like little sticker dots and I'm just going to label everything. I love labeling. It's my new thing recently. Check the printed pattern and select the closer result. What? Check the printed pattern? Is this the pattern?
So this week I wanted to create a little personal illustration for my Instagram. I feel like my most common theme I guess in my work is nature related. I've been wanting to step a little bit outside of that but I think I'm not actually all that creative like I can't really think outside of the box. For this illustration I was inspired by the Russian illustrator Ivan Bilibin. I really love his use of borders. I've been really into like ornamental decorative things recently and I actually drew something and it had a really pretty border and then I ended up doing a completely different illustration. Some of my favorite brushes are the Narender brush that I altered a little bit and I also like the HP pencil and most recently for coloring I've been using the gouache brush which is really fun. I'm loving having more traditional textures in my pieces. I've been trying to sketch traditionally more because I definitely come up with a lot more ideas when I'm sketching traditionally. I had a phase like two months ago where I carried around my sketchbook everywhere and I haven't drawn in my sketchbook in a while. Having my sketchbook easily accessible means that I can just draw all the time and then one of those ideas that I just sketch out will be good as opposed to when I sit down to draw for like the first time during the day with my iPad and like there's a lot of pressure to create one perfect illustration. I'm, I'm not really sure if that makes sense. I've also been struggling a lot in terms of like my style, I guess, lately. It's something that I don't want to focus on, but it just happens. Like I end up thinking about how my personal work and my professional work aren't really similar. And I always end up wanting them to be, to have like a little bit of a resemblance so you can tell that all my work came from my hand. I've been trying to let go of that feeling because it doesn't really matter what style I use. I want to work in the animation industry and a lot of professionals say that consistency is really good. And so I feel this pressure to make all my work consistent and look like it was drawn by one person. But then sometimes I want to experiment with different mediums and different styles and I don't really know how to make them all look like one thing. An artist that really inspires me is Natalie Anderson because she has a lot of personal work and then she's also done graphic novels and she's worked in animation and all of her work has a very similar feel and vibe to it and I want that kind of versatility where my work can be like universally used for multiple different subjects. Like if I make a piece I want it to be like someone could use it as a poster or a book cover or I don't know a shirt. I can't believe I have little identity crises, crises over this and it's like this is just it's just lying like it's not a big deal and sometimes when I get really stressed I remember like I can I can draw anything I can make whatever I want so I don't know it's like a it's like a whole jumble of feelings but for now this illustration turned out really cute and I should be happy about it and that's that's good I think it's good it's good enough Go away. Okay, bye bye, guys. Now, 
Excuse me. Excuse me. No, I can't see. Progress update. I messed this one up a little bit and I had to cut a piece off and now I'm not really into like this little circle. But also this leather's like the flimsiest one. It's like super thin, very paper-like, but whatever. I also didn't line up the holes very well, but that's okay. I'm also not really into how like this is sticking off. But the thing is the hole punchers, I don't know if any of you ever made a leather bag. I don't know for how many of you, this is like a normal occurrence. But you have to use like a a mallet to like pew, 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 so it makes a hole otherwise you can't sew it and i don't have like the surface i need at home to do it so i did like a few in school and now i'm lining them up but now i'm really annoyed about how this is floating up but it's like fine it's not a big deal it's just a little annoying i have this circle to do i have a circle here so you can see i did like only a few holes and then for some of them, I just didn't want to go around the whole thing because it's so much work. But yeah, it's actually it's actually pretty cute. I'm excited to see how this goes. Look at this. Oh. I've only gotten this much done. <laughs> I'm doing it like inside out. So you can't see it. But now that I think about it, why did I choose contrasting stitching colors if I wasn't going to show it? But that's okay. I feel like a cleaner look will be nice. This Also the beeswax is so gross. Like when I'm sewing. Ooh, big stretch. <laughs> I love when he gets stuck. Come on, little guy. <laughs> anyway, this beeswax is really gross. Like this beeswax thread. Oh my god, what is happening? Okay, it's not their fault that my table's so messy. Look what we have! It's something that looks like a bag. The gusset ended up being really skinny because I flipped it inside out. Um, now what I have to do is sew this thing in for the little loops. And I don't know what else. Oh no, I forgot that I actually had these really big ones and I cut this. This is so exciting. I can't believe I made a bag.
all the way. <laughs> I've been doing some research on different artists that I like and specifically artists that work in animation or worked in animation. A lot of them used gouache for background paintings and concept art and I found that pretty interesting because what's the obsession with gouache? Why do we love gouache so much? And there must be a reason that they're using gouache so I thought I should learn it because if all the great masters of art learned gouache then i should learn gouache but also i think it's really important to understand traditional painting techniques you can always just reapply that into digital art and i think there's a lot of areas in which i still struggle specifically with lighting and contrast i guess you could call it and the artists that i chose to steal from today were kazuo oga who does backgrounds for studio ghibli and Mary Blair, who did concept art for a lot of Disney movies in the 50s. And I was also going to do a few more. And I had the I had the references saved and I was planning on painting them. By the time I was done, I was just like, I can't. I cannot do this anymore. Like I was just left feeling so discouraged because I just could not replicate their work. And I'm aware that they have years of practice behind them and I don't but i still feel i still feel really frustrated when what i'm doing isn't looking like what i'm referencing from but that's okay like i'm not giving up on gouache or anything i started with a kazuo oga piece and i watched a few videos and there's not that many available but i watched a video of his and a video from another background painter and they both seem to use poster paint which they described as opaque watercolor and they prepped the paper by painting or i guess soaking both sides with water and letting the paper absorb it a little bit something about how it absorbs the paint better afterwards and i mean i'm not really familiar with gouache but it did seem to make it more smooth until the paper dried and i didn't like it anymore i also am not sure if i was using the right paper they used 400 pound paper and mine was 100 pound paper but i don't really know how much of a difference that makes like i might just be saying that because i'm not good at gouache after prepping the paper like they did, I went into the base colors and the base layers and I didn't do a sketch because I thought if I did a sketch, I would freak myself out too much. Like the more I think about starting a painting, the less likely I am to do it. And the base color thing went okay. Like there were definitely a lot of streaks and as I was watching their videos, they actually emphasized like a specific painting technique for the sky and the grass so there aren't any streaks and i don't know if it's because i made the gouache too watery but there were definitely streaks left in the sky that i made and i ended up going back and painting the sky after i already did the house and the grass and it just looked stupid like it wasn't good and that's why you do it first so it's like a seamless sky in the background but mine just ended up being streaky and i was really bothered by it so i'm not sure what i did wrong there but as I was building up the layers, like, I was just getting really frustrated because, and I don't know how many artists can, like, visualize their end piece, but that's just something I'm not capable of. Like, as I'm working, I don't see where it's going. Like, I just see what you see, like, what's right in front of you, and it doesn't look good. 
So I get really discouraged and I'm like, hmm, <laughs> this isn't working out. I don't paint in gouache regularly. Like, I'm not good at it. I know I'm not good at it. And yet when I'm painting, I'm like, hmm, kind of weird how this doesn't look professional. And I was also struggling to not mush around the colors, if that makes sense. Like, something that's really cool about Ogo's work is that, like, there's a smooth transition between green to blue. And when I was doing it, you could see where I shifted the colors. Like, you could see the streaks from the brush. And again, maybe it's because... I was working with it too opaque or like maybe it's too watery like I don't know if there's like a specific consistency that it has to be at to blend well but I just could not get like that smooth blend effect and it's really interesting because the house turned out okay and the stone guys turned out okay as well but the large patch of grass gave me a lot of struggle and he didn't really define a lot of the blades of grass like there was only a few around the little stone guys and that's it like for the most part it was just like a smooth grass patch but I was fairly happy with how the house turned out because I was able to achieve like a clear sense of contrast you can see which part of the house is in shadow and it didn't end up being too accurate to his painting and I think that's fair because I didn't start out with the sketch I really wanted to just achieve a clear light and dark situation which I think I did and the little stone guys also turned out okay this wet on wet technique was definitely interesting and when I do the Mary Blair paintings she had a more dry on dry technique. You can see her brush strokes. And I found that to be a lot easier than making it smooth. So I think I'll focus a little bit more on making looser work like that. And maybe she kept it looser because it's concept art versus Oga's work, which was going into the film like it was the background art. You think that the simpler something is, the easier it is, but a lot of times the simpler something is, the harder it is to achieve. And I guess it's the same concept where like you have to know the rules to break them. I'm definitely not at that point yet. This was very good practice for me. And I did still struggle with the colors and blending the gouache, but her work was more simple and the colors were separated. It just has like a very cartoony feel where it doesn't have to look realistic, but I only did a few pieces this time. I just got really tired. I can't believe how much gouache drains me but i definitely want to learn how to use it i would like to be a well-rounded artist and i think that includes gouache no matter how difficult it is for me right now <laughs>